Alrighty, CNT 140, we're looking at Chapter 2. We're looking at the next section where we're looking at video transmission and ultimately coaxial cable. Uh, with the, develop, the development of television, uh, they give us an example of television is kind of like a fax machine where uh, the image I'm trying to send uh, is going to... Uh, the sensor, the, the the camera, if you will, is going to scan that image almost line by line, send it as a signal, and then reprint it on the screen for you. Um, and it's going to do it very quickly. That's your scan rate on and when you're looking at screens and televisions and so forth. Um, and as we went from black and white to color, requires a significant bandwidth it, it was television itself significant bandwidth and as we've gone over time uh, and increased the the quality of it needs more and more bandwidth well that six megahertz bandwidth for a television signal needs to get modulated to match the channel frequency that is being sent and your modulator is the piece that's going to do that. Uh, and I give you an example here of if I have multiple different video signal inputs, modulators can modulate them to channels that you would get um, across your TV. Channel 67, channel 68, channel 69, channels. Okay, these different inputs can be modulated into channels. Well, these inputs can be, in this case, just trying to show you in like a hotel kind of area. Uh, but this could be, this is ESPN, uh, this is your weather channel, this is your uh, movie channel, this is your blah. These different inputs coming in from different antennas and different satellites can be modulated into certain channels that you get on your cable television package. All that was typically done through coaxial cable. Your cable television came through coaxial cable traditionally, and many times still part of your cable TV network is coaxial. So looking real quickly, uh, our coaxial cable construction, the outer jacket, that's your protection. The shielding, this is to uh, keep outside interference and noise out, as well as keep this signal in so that it does not affect other things around it. The dielectric, that's kind of an insulator. And then our conductor, this is where the actual signal is going through, and that is your copper cable going through there. And here actually shows you uh, an actual picture of coax jacket, your shielding, your dielectric, and your conductor here. Uh, there are different types of coax, and they're specified by RG number. Uh, the differences have to do with the size, the conductor size, and the shielding of it. And the size of your conductor is to American wire gauge or gauge size. Okay. So as I look at different types of coax, I see RG8, RG58. Well, these were from the early days of networking. Um, RG8 was used for your thick net 10 base 5 Ethernet networks. And your RG58 was used for the later and thinner 10 base 2 thin net networks using BNC connections. So if I go back in time real quickly, uh, your early Ethernet with Bob Metcalf, Bob, Bob Metcalf uh, your 10 base 5 networks where we had the coax cable and the transceiver that bolted around the cable, this was our G8. This was thicker than you have in your house. And this is actually the transceiver that bolted around that cable. And you see that's pretty significant size. Um, that would, you know, that's for most of you probably the size of index fingers and, and maybe a little bit larger for some of you. This is that type of network that we had. As time went on, we started getting a thinner coax, your G58. This was used for your thin net Ethernet, where we had the BNC connectors and the T connectors connecting back to the PCs. This stuff right here that hopefully you remember seeing from 120. Again, making your bus network. Well, for television signals, that was network, so I was trying to get you to remember what, uh, what we talked about before. But with television signals, you typically run into RG59 or RG6. Most of us at home would have RG6 cabling. RG59 was kind of the first uh, uh, cable used for cable TV, then later on replaced by RG6. With your RG59 uh, RG6, we typically have this strew type connector here, uh, the F type connector. The advantages for all this is it is resistant to noise and interference, pretty sturdy for, uh, for, for against physical damage. 
downside is it, it was not cheap initially. Uh, it is thicker, harder to, you know, cable kind of thing for uh, stiffness, that sort of thing. All right, so with our television signals, we're typically dealing with this coax cable that we looked at right here. That's what we're typically dealing with with our television signals. All right, so with cable TV networks, they acquire signals through satellites at the head end. Again, this is the picture the book has. Let's do better than that. Um, typically, this is your head end. Hopefully, you remember that from Chapter 1. Head end is basically an antenna farm at the cable TV company, multiple satellite dishes, multiple antennas, pulling in local television stations, satellite signals from ESPN, you know, movie channels, that sort of thing. Uh, all that gets modulated together. Those signals coming in from different antennas gets modulated into channel 1, channel 10, channel 50, channel 90, and that is sent across. Again, here's all the signals coming in. All these are modulated into a, a, a signal or a cable that's coming out to your house. And then that comes out to your house in the traditional structure here, as we talked about before, cable lines. Modern, they run it through fiber out to a box in your neighborhood and then coax to your house, if you will. All this is done through the, the trunk lines leaving the head end through one inch coax, this kind of thing here. As it comes close to your neighborhood, it's getting smaller, half inch coax, and then eventually the quarter inch coax that comes into your house, like the RG6 that you're used to having in your house. Today, as we said, uh, there's some overlay here. There's some fiber optic from the head end out to boxes near your house and in your neighborhood, um, and then coax coming into your house kind of thing. All right, so there's a little bit about coax and your television signals. We'll come back in the next one talking networks.